Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess, and today we're going to go over different strategies to populate documents, whether you want to do it free or you want to do it paid for. And this comes from uh, your questions and comments in my last YouTube video. So we populated a word template through Power Apps. Now one comment came in and said, you know, you should really put this as a premium feature in the title. The title, the last video was more about the Power Apps V2 trigger and that V2 trigger is not premium. This is not what's premium. The reason the last video was using a premium capacity was not the Power Apps V2 trigger. It was the Word Online Business Connector. But for this video, we're gonna talk about strategies, how to use the premium license capacity, but keep the cost down. There was another comment that I received and it was like, hey, what if we do want to do this with premium? You know, how do we do this with premium? You know, a lot of people shun away from premium content and maybe there's strategies that you could use so you're not paying for hundreds of Power Apps per user licenses. Now, currently right now, for the per user plan of Power Apps, per user per month, it's $20. Now for Power Automate, it's actually $15 per user per month. So in Power Apps, this is everyone who uses the app, everyone who designs the app. If you use the app, you have to have a premium license to run Power Apps. Now for Power Automate, you could build a scheduled flow. You could build a scheduled flow that everyone is not clicking the button and then it populates your templates. So look at the text right here highlighted in yellow. This is straight out of Microsoft Learn. If an automated or scheduled flow uses a premium connector, only the owner needs a premium license. So that means if we did word templates based on a schedule, you only need one premium license. Right here, if an instant flow has a premium connector, every user who runs the flow needs a power automate premium license. So instant flow is that button click, right? You click a button, everyone needs that premium license. So now think about this. If you want to lessen the cost of your templates, maybe you run it on a schedule. Maybe you run it every Monday at 8 a.m. and these templates are processed then. How dire is it that you have these templates right now? Can you wait on a schedule? Maybe that's a better way to do it. So now that we've thought about these premium licenses and we use Microsoft Learn, we can either, you know, $20 per user for everyone who uses the Power App, or we can build a scheduled flow that makes our templates for us. And that way we're only paying $15 for one user for the entire month. Now that's not astronomical. I think that's something that some of us can do that have a business. Okay, so now that we went over the license and license strategies, you can come up with what, what you would like. If you wanna use the Microsoft 365 uh, license model, that's something you do. If you wanna use Power Apps Premium, if you wanna use Power Automate Premium, maybe you already have Power Apps Premium because you're using it per user per month for a certain set of users. Now let's talk about the template. I want to create a word template. So I'm going to go to file. Now I'm just going to pick something out of the box with uh, Microsoft that already they already have for me. I'll pick this service invoice right here. And we'll just create it and it's coming up with a template. Now I'm not going to do this dynamic part yet today. I have an idea for this, but that's where it's going to be premium. You know, we're going to have to actually pay. We'll work on the dynamic part. I know there's a lot of questions about doing this. Let's talk about the top part here. The first thing we need to do is we need a developer tab up here. So up here, we go to file, options, and it is in the customized ribbon. We need, so you can see it right here, developer tab. You need to turn this on so we can actually develop and create custom templates for Word. All right, so we turn that on. Now up here, we have the developer tab. All right, so let's look at date here. You notice how when I click on date, it's all the way highlighted. It's highlighted straight in there. I'm just gonna retype in date. I'm gonna retype in date, highlight it, and go to the developer tab, and I'm gonna turn it into, right here, a plain text context control. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for an uh, invoice number. I'm just gonna type in invoice number, maybe not a period. We'll highlight it, just the invoice number. We'll go to developer, and I'm gonna click right here plain text content control. And I'll just do this all the way down real quick. 
Okay, now that we have our invoices set up, you can go to properties and then you can name it. You can title it date and the tag as date also. So now I'm going to do that on each of these. So developer and then I'm going to give it, go to properties, invoice, number, invoice number. There's other options you have in here, you know, start and end tag, bounding box. You can change the colors, formats. All that's for you to be decided. Maybe you want to turn on, you know, content control cannot be deleted, you know, maybe things like that. But you notice when I renamed it, it actually gave it the name right there. So I'm going to do the rest of the field, street address, city, etc. All right, so I've mainly just done it on these parts here on the date, invoice number, and these columns. So you can see each one of these is now named. So now I'm going to save this document. Maybe another idea is in your SharePoint site. So I have a brand new SharePoint site called Invoice SharePoint Site. Maybe you want a, a new document library for your templates. Uh, now, normally this stuff would go in Site Assets, but I couldn't get it to go in Site Assets in the Word connector. I even tried using the ID of the library, but I couldn't get it to go in there. So maybe you want a library that stores your templates and maybe only give yourself access. Maybe don't give everyone access to the templates. All right, so now we've stored our document somewhere. And I, I stored it in my library called Template. It's a secondary library that I have here. All right, so now let's go back to Power Automate again. So we can do, now this is my recommendation, you decide what you wanna do for your company. There is not one way that you should be doing everything that all of us YouTubers teach you how to do. There are many different ways to do many different issues depending on your requirements of your project. But for this project, I'm gonna do it on a scheduled flow. I'm just gonna say, you know, run invoice on Monday. We'll just say, you know, every one week at 8 a.m., we'll send out our invoices. So only on Monday at 8 a.m. will we send out our, our invoices. Now, as I was showing in my last video, we used Power Apps to populate this document. You don't have to use Power Apps. There's no reason to use Power Apps if you don't need to. We could have a simple SharePoint list that has the information. So I'm gonna create a, a very quick SharePoint list. Now the list is gonna be the same columns that we used in our template. With title, never delete title, always use title somehow. So all I'm gonna do for title is I'm gonna rename it and maybe I'll rename it invoice number. So invoice N-O. Next we'll do the next column, I had a date column. So we'll just call this one date or invoice date never try never use out of the box fields date is not specific enough I'll use invoice date and then we need street address and so on so we'll just create all these columns straight on down and there's city zip phone fax and email left okay I have my columns created now I'm just gonna populate it with some fake data so we can run this power automate all right, so we have our list. I'm gonna add one more column, and this column is gonna be if it's completed or not. I'm just gonna use a text field, or maybe I'll use a choice, and we'll call it completed. And I, normally I don't do the yes or no check boxes. I, I prefer the, the drop down. So complete, so we have complete, and then we have not complete. And there's gonna be no third choice, okay? And by default, it's gonna be uh, not complete first. So the default will be not complete and we will save. And then I'm also going to populate that field. Not complete, not complete. Now, there are many ways to get this data in SharePoint. That's not what this video is about. We're gonna pretend that the data is already there in SharePoint and then we're gonna populate our template. Okay, so for every week on Monday, we're gonna do our reoccurrence field. And then next, we are going to get the data in Word so this is where the premium comes in. So as soon as we go right here, Word Online for Business, this is the premium capacity part. But if we're only paying for one Power Automate license, great. So we're gonna populate a Microsoft Word template. Now the location, and I kind of went over this fast last time. Maybe you don't see your site in your large list, right? At the very bottom right now, you have enter a custom value. This is where you can go to your site, take the URL, 
and then copy and put that into your location. Now there are little issues. Now this may drive you crazy. Maybe you haven't learned this yet. If, if you just try and paste it in there, it's actually not going to find the information. You have to go in here and say enter custom value, then paste it in, and then Power Automate will allow you to continue. So now we're gonna use the document library. Remember I, I made that template document library. And the file we're going to use is this invoice template. We are showing the seven parameters here. I'm just gonna click show all. So we have city zip, phone, email, date, invoice number, street address, and fax. That's where we're populating the Microsoft Word template. So how are we gonna get that data? So we're gonna get that data from SharePoint. So actually in the action right here, we're gonna say SharePoint, and it'll be get items, I believe. Get items right here. Now there's more, you can click see more if you wanna see more options in SharePoint, but we're just gonna do get items. And the SharePoint site, we're gonna use the invoice SharePoint site. The list name is gonna be that invoice list I made. And here we have some advanced parameters. Now we could filter, we wanna filter when completed is equal to not completed. So once it's complete, we don't wanna run the invoice on them. So let's go back to uh, the filter query. We're gonna say when completed is EQ to not completed, not complete. Okay, so we have that step in there. Now inside our document here, our template, our populate the word template, what we wanna do is match up each of the fields that we pulled in from SharePoint to the fields in the template. Now, when I click on this, what's gonna happen? It's gonna put this in and apply to each loop because there's more than one list item. Right here, the dynamic content, we have our get items. So city zip will be city zip. Now you notice it put it in that for each loop. Now we're gonna do phone is phone. Email, email. Date is date. So we call this invoice date. Invoice uh, number is the title, the street address, and the fax. Okay, so we've now populated our templates. Inside the for each loop, what we want to do is we want to save this template inside our SharePoint list. So now we're gonna add an action inside the for each loop. So in the for each loop, we're gonna go back to SharePoint. We're gonna create a file this time, so see more. We want to create a file, and it's gonna be the same site address, the folder path. We'll put it in the document library, so that's my shared documents. The file name, this is where we'll give it that invoice number. So we'll give it the invoice number. Oh, that was the date. You could add the date in there, that might be nice, but. For me, I believe the invoice number will be unique. Like there's not gonna be multiple invoice numbers that I'm aware of yet. So that'll be the title, .docx for docs. The content is gonna be right here, our Microsoft Word document. Okay, so we have that complete. We can click save. Now the next thing we wanna do actually is we want to set that value from not completed to complete. So the final thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to SharePoint, see more, and I am going to update a list item. So let's see if we can update a list, update a file, no, update an item, because we're gonna do the list. And it's gonna be the same place, the list item, the unique identifier, so this is gonna be straight from our get items, so the one that we're on. So we're, we're looping through, it's gonna be the item that we're on, and what we want to update is the completed value to complete. Exactly what we wanna do, and then I'm gonna hit save. And now we're gonna run this. So it's a very simple flow, but it has a lot of complex parts. It's only requiring one Power Automate premium license. That's $15 a month. Hopefully we can handle that. We're making these invoices, we're making lots of money, right? That's what an invoice is for. We can afford a $15 premium uh, license. I'm gonna manually run it this time just for testing purposes, but it will run on a reoccurrence every Monday. So we're gonna run the flow. 
wait for it to check off. It's going to go two times, right? So this is actually correct. One of two. One of two. You can see the time that it took. Now we're going to go to SharePoint and our document library. We have two documents in here named with our invoice number. We can see that it's populated with the date, the invoice number, and our information straight out of SharePoint. Same thing here. So it's using that document template. It's now populated the invoice with the date, the invoice number, and our documents. Now notice in our SharePoint list, we can see that the completed file has now changed to complete. So let's go back to Power Automate also. Let's run the Power Automate again and test it again to make sure our filter works. So I'll hit edit. I will test again. Nothing should actually run today. Well, it would be the next Monday because nothing is not complete. So we run again. This time, zero seconds. It went through no options, right? It ran successfully. It checked off everything out because our filter query was complete and there were no items that were not complete. So if we go back to SharePoint and we check our invoices, it didn't duplicate again. So that's where that filter query comes in and that's why it's useful. And I definitely suggest testing it. Make sure to test before anything goes in production. Now for my next video, what I think I'm going to work on is we're gonna work on this dynamic table. This is a question that comes up. Maybe it won't be my next video, but sometime in the near future, so like and subscribe me. I'm going to work on this dynamic uh, table here, and we're going to populate that based on you know 20 rows or 10 rows. We're not we're not sure what that row the rows will be. If it was just about four rows, we could probably do this you know very simply. But as soon as it becomes dynamic and we really want it to grow, I have some ideas. It's going to be more premium licenses, but it's going to be really cool. But thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess. Stay tuned, like, and subscribe, and we'll work on that dynamic table next.